Have you seen I Care A Lot? Well, get ready to root for the bad guy. Ne never mind. That's, that's, no, that's not going to happen whatsoever. Let's review this. I Care A Lot stars Rosamund Pike, Peter Dinklage, and is directed by Jay Blakison. What's up guys, it's time for a brand new 2021 review, but before I get into this, I wanted to dedicate this review to Gabe Arnold and his father. Gabe Arnold is one of my patrons. His father's in the hospital right now. He has COVID and pneumonia in both his lungs. He's, he's seen better days. And so uh, I just wanna dedicate this review to him. And I just wanna let you know that the Drum Dumps family, the horror community, uh, we all are in this with you. And uh, we're just hoping and praying that you have a speedy recovery get through this mess uh, that's affecting so many lives right now. So Gabe Arnold and your father, this is dedicated to you guys. And by the way, um, sir, you have a great son right there, okay? And uh, the, I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But anyway, uh, let's get into this this movie, 2020 Review. This this is a, um, a movie that caught my eye because of Rosamund Pike. You know, we're all fans of Gone Girl. And her performance in Gone Girl was really great. It really stood out. She just came across as like fearless. And, and the, you know, the type of character that we all love. Not saying that she was like the greatest character in that movie, uh, most likable character, but there was just something there that was really interesting. Something that, that draws the viewer in. And this is a similar type of character with those you know, types of traits, that ambition, that fearlessness, but there's something about this character that, that rubs me the wrong way. I guess that's the best way to put it. Anyway, first off, quick plot synopsis. Rosamund Pike, she plays Marla. I was thinking of Marla Singer uh, immediately. Anytime I hear the name Marla, it makes me think of Marla Singer from Fight Club. But she is a, a legal guardian. More, more importantly, she's a crook. That, that's what she is. She preys on the weak and it's just to get rich, you know, and, and there's this uh, narration, this opening narration where she's talking about, you know, the difference between the rich and everybody else. And the only way to get, to get rich is to step on the weak, to take advantage, uh, really to just be a scumbag. And right away, I, I have problems with this, but I figured, hey, this will tie into the plot and everything. And so there'll be a reason for this opening narration. You know, it's a, it's a cutthroat type of person. Sure, there's plenty of great cutthroat criminal types of uh, characters in movies that we all love. I, I mean, I could point at Goodfellas, and those are characters that just chew up the screen. But anyway, back to the plot. She is preying on this elderly lady, Jennifer, uh, played by Diane Weiss, veteran actor. You know, everybody remembers her from like Lost Boys and, and tons of other things. And this is, you know, this is a, a lady that she's fine. She can take care of herself. And Marla, with just, you know, the help of a couple of doctors in her pocket, she she shows up at her door and says, I am your legal guardian. I have full control over you. There is nothing you can do about it. And she says it in the nicest way possible. The court has ruled that you require assistance in taking care of yourself. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm afraid it's not up to you to decide. The court has appointed me to be your legal guardian. What? And so, of course, this lady's like, what the hell? Why is this happening to me? Why is my life completely being changed for the worse? And I'm, you know, I'm taken to this facility I know nothing about. And you feel horrible for her. And you hate this character, Marla, for what she is doing. She's doing like the worst thing. But she happens to take advantage of the wrong person because Jennifer's son is Roman, played by Peter Dinklage. And Roman is a dangerous guy with a little bit of a temper. And he just wants to get his mother out of that facility. He loves his mother. And so the rest of the movie is him trying to convince Marla uh, with the greatest amount of pressure possible to let my mother out of this facility. I like this guy. <laughs> I mean, he just wants to get his mother out. Yeah, he's a criminal and everything. He's part of the, the criminal underworld, the mafia, but still, uh, a, a son loves his mother. Okay, before I start getting into the cons, uh, and what really irked me about this movie, I will mention a couple of pros here. Rosamund Pike, of course, great actress. She does a, a, an amazing job in this movie. You know, I'd say if you take, you know, a pool of actors, let's say 20 of them, you know, one of them has what I call star power. The ability to carry a movie by themselves and to have the, the audience just completely be drawn in by their performance. That's Rosamund Pike. She's great at what she does. 
uh, you know, she's kind of today's Sigourney Weaver. She just has a very strong demeanor about herself. And, uh, you know, she's commanding. She's just a commanding type of personality. And this is a character that is very motivated, very um, assertive, and she plays it to a T. Whatever her end goal is, she's gonna go out of her way to reach that goal, no matter what. But the problem is, the goal is to take advantage of people that are just completely weak. And I'm not talking about like normally weak, I'm talking about like, there's two things that you don't wanna do in Hollywood. You don't wanna prey on children and you don't wanna prey on the elderly. I mean, you can do that, but you're gonna come off as a character that you're not rooting for at all. And it feels like in this movie, they're wanting you to root for her a little bit. It's strange. Also, Peter Dinklage, I mean, Tyrion from Game of Thrones. He brings it in this role. He's scary at times. He plays a good boss, you know, boss level guy, I guess. The problem was I found myself rooting for him over the character Marla. And I don't know if I was supposed to be doing that. Like, I, I wanted him to win throughout. Now. Let me talk about a quick elephant in the room. Uh, I can see how some people, especially in today's PC age, are gonna call this movie woke, or they're gonna say that this movie is screaming girl power. And yeah, that does exist, but for the most part, I go into a movie looking at characters as characters. I don't care if they're female, I don't care if they're male. Strong characters are strong characters. And what I mean by strong is physically strong, mentally strong, you know, uh, interesting. And that's the way I approached this movie. Um, I didn't look at it as, uh, I should be viewing her character differently because she's a woman. No, I, w I was just, she is the head of this assisted living facility. Could be a man, could be a woman. And that's, that's a barometer for myself too when I'm watching these types of movies. What if Marla was Mark? What if Marla was played by a man? Would my opinion on this character be any different, you know? And if it, if it is different, then maybe you need to have a conversation with yourself. I'm not looking at this as, you know, woke material at all, you know? It's just people living their lives, and there's all different types of people in this world. There's strong people, there's weak people, and uh, how they carry their lives and how it develops the story. There are some nice riveting moments in this too, you know? This is a character that is put in harm's way quite a few times because of the wrath of Roman. And normally you should be like, Hell yeah, you know, this is like like what Martin Riggs was putting up with in Lethal Weapon, you know, having to get out of these horrible situations. Like he, he's underwater and, you know, he has to break his shoulder or not, you know, knock his shoulder back into place. And we're rooting for him. Yes, Martin Riggs, you're, you're, the, you're so fucking awesome. Because of who this character was, I, I didn't care. I didn't want, I didn't want her to, to survive. I wanted her to lose. And I guess that's a good segue into the cons of this movie and I've kind of addressed it, but it's okay to have bad guys in movies be the main characters. It's okay to enjoy those characters. You know, Payback, another great example. Get ready to root for the bad guy. That is the, the tagline for Payback. And it's a fun ass movie because it's all in this criminal underworld and everybody stays in that little sandbox. When you step outside of that sandbox and the person that you're supposed to be rooting for is taking advantage of the elderly. And by the way, the movie discards the elderly just as fast as the characters in the movie discard the elderly, which I kind of find disgusting. Jennifer, this poor lady, is not anywhere near the focal point of the movie at all. She's really just a chess piece in, in the story for Roman to try to save. Uh, but they don't focus on her that much. You don't see the struggle that this character is going through. Because if you did see the, the struggle that this character was going through, then you would really, really, really hate Marla with a fiery purple passion. And I already don't like her at all. Also, Marla is not a character with an arc. And I'm not saying you have to have an arc in a movie. There's plenty of great movies where the character doesn't really have much of an arc. Back to the Future, Marty McFly doesn't really have much of an arc. But I still w loved watching his journey through that. Uh, in this movie, the very beginning, Marla is a complete asshole. By the end of this movie, Marla is a complete asshole. So what happened uh, from the start to the finish to make us interested in what she was doing? Nothing, really. The whole time I'm thinking, you're still an asshole. What you did to Jennifer, this old lady, is horrible. I hate you. That's, that's, you know, that's the journey in this movie. And if they do anything at the end of the movie to try to make up for it, it's almost too little too late. But I mean, if anything, this movie does draw out an interesting conversation because yes, there are people like Marla out there that take advantage of the weak. 
Uh, it, it just so happens though that this movie is trying to make her look good. I don't know. It, it, it's weird. It's like, let's celebrate the fact that Marla is this strong individual and, and able to persevere throughout this crazy stuff. But no, Marla's horrible what, what she's doing. It, it's horrible. And so it would be nice, going back to that character arc, if she started off like that and by the end, she has some sort of connection with the people that she's taking advantage of. And so then she kind of comes full circle and realizes that what she's doing is horrible. Then you got a great movie there. But no, not at all. So in the end, guys, I'm giving this a two hours loss. I, I thought about giving it just a straight up humdrum, but no, I, it's, I'll never watch this again. I just felt horrible for this person. And so, yeah, didn't like it at all. And I, I, that might be a, a conflicting rating. You know, some of you guys might really like this movie. It does have strong performances in there. There are some nice nail biting scenes. Uh, you know, uh, it's paced very well. Went, by, went right by. But the whole time I'm thinking, you're a douchebag, Marla. So anyway, that's it. So anyway, be sure to come up with Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays, Rudy Free For All Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on all my socials. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. And Gabe Arnold's father, Hang in there, sir. Keep fighting, okay? Drum them out.